Now, usually I'm a one-man band here at Product Review Cars, but thanks to the help of someone called my dad, we can get both of these electric cars, which are very similar in price and very similar in features, and two cars you would likely cross shop here on this channel for you to check out. Now, you can think of this a bit like a boxing match. Over here on the right side, I have the MG4 electric, and here on my left side is the BYD Dolphin. Now, these aren't the entry-level models, because if you were to buy these at their base model, there's only a $100 difference between the two. So, of course, you take that $100 bill and you go, well, am I better saving it and buying the BYD Dolphin, or should I spend it and get the MG4 electric? But I'm going to do a comparison between these two cars. I'm going to show you what they have, and I'm also going to drive them back to back to let you know which car I would pick if it was my money. This is Product Review Cars. My name's Cameron. Let's get into it. Now, this is the MG4 electric. Let's run through the basics. First of all, the price. It's $100 more expensive. That's the price down below before on-road costs than the BYD Dolphin. It only has 350 kilometers of range. Now, this thing has more interior space. This is how much interior space it has down below in terms of boot space and it's also rear-wheel drive as standard but this one here is a bit nicer because this is the 77 kilowatt hour battery all-wheel drive long-range version so you're getting well over 560 kilometers of range and it has a hell of a lot of range but it also costs a whole lot more it's nearly sixty thousand dollars for this model that you're seeing here the entry-level model misses out on the nice rear wing but that's pretty much it if you're driving side by side and you took the rear wing off this you would not tell the difference between this and the base MG4. Now this is the recently launched BYD Dolphin. Now the name is a little bit interesting, but this thing is, yes, $100 less than that car behind me. And that's the price down below. Now it does have a little less boot space on the inside. That's how much boot space it has down below. So it is a bit more compact. And it's also front wheel drive only, regardless if you get the base or the premium version of the Dolphin. Now this is the premium version. You can tell because it's got a dual tone paint setup and there's some nicer features on the inside. Now this is a very important thing to talk about, charging. So this base model MG4 electric will charge at a rate of 88 kilowatts, meaning that you'll spend a little less time at the charger. But here's the interesting thing, because the BYD has a smaller battery, you actually make up a bit of time. So it will only take you 37 minutes to charge from 10 to 80% on the base MG4. But if you go and charge the base BYD, which has a slower charging rate, it will actually only take one minute longer. It will take you 38 minutes to charge the BYD Dolphin. But once you get to these more premium models, it's going to take you 38 minutes to charge this car here, but this car will also charge at a faster rate because it's the long range version, which means it can accept a charge up to 144 kilowatt hours. Now you can only charge the BYD Dolphin Premium at a rate up to 88 kilowatts, so it's not all that fast, but it's not that much slower to charge up. It only takes 40 minutes to charge this from 10 to 80%. But yes, these charge rates are kind of slow because you are looking at the more budget end of EVs, and you'll need to spend more money if you want a faster charging EV because both these cars have a nice long range but they're not really that quick to charge. But in saying that these are most likely going to be city runabouts rather than road tripping EVs. Now here's where the MG wins. It gets a seven year warranty and unlimited mileage for the battery and the car where the BYD is a bit more conditional. It has a six year 150,000 kilometer warranty but it has an eight year 160,000 kilometer warranty for the battery. So yes if you want the better warranty you're going to get the MG4 but here's the good thing. Both of these cars do include a home charging cable, something that Tesla got rid of a little while ago. Now let's talk interiors. Now let's start with the MG, of course, because this is the one I've spent the most amount of time in. The seats are pretty comfortable, but I did find the BYD to be a bit more comfortable. But let's talk materials in here. There's a mix of soft touch, but mostly hard plastics. We have a 10 inch display here in the middle with some hard buttons below it for volume controls and also some mild climate controls like demisters and turning your climate control on and off. You also have a wireless charging pad here. You have a rotary shift dial and you do have a physical control for your parking brake. Now we have a two spoke steering wheel here which is adjustable telescopically which is nice to get nice and comfortable. We've also got a screen in front of you to read out any sort of information that's around you so in terms of what cars or push bikes or motorbikes are near you that's what that car will read and display for you over on the left side in the middle you have speed and also your range on the right side you have a bunch of different car information and you can even check your tire pressure sensors. Now the thing with these tire pressure sensors is that I found them to be a little bit wonky and they are easy to get 
out of calibration. Now, I thought I had a flat tire three MG4s ago, and it turns out I didn't. Second MG4 I got after that, it had the same tire pressure sensor issue, and I thought I'd run over a nail, I didn't. Now, this car has been playing different warnings on the two rear tires, and both of those tires are fine, and the pressures are actually normal, but it is still ringing warning labels. So, that is something that I found to be a big detractor in this car for me, has been those tire pressure sensors. I would rather them just maybe out of the car, or something we can simply remove, because they do cost $80 to replace, and if they keep faulting, just because of some slight bumps and potholes on the road, then they will be a bit annoying to live with. But that's just a small little irk. The rest of this interior is pretty usable. We have a nice big center storage area and we do have an okay sized cubby over on the passenger side. Now I find this interior to be really easy to look out of. There's plenty of glass. Both these cars do not struggle with any sort of blind spots. They're pretty easy to look out of and it is fairly comfortable in here. But if you're looking for a pretty practical easy to use and understand interior, the MG4 is a lot easier and less complicated than the BYD. Let me show you why. Now I haven't spent that much time with BYD, this is my first time actually driving one and sitting inside I've been very impressed so far. In terms of the construction and everything, it's quite nice. We do have a nice big glass roof in this BYD Dolphin Premium as well. Now the steering wheel just feels a bit nicer, I think materials just feel a tiny bit nicer than the MG steering wheel and I do like the functionality of the steering wheel as well with these clearly laid out buttons rather than the multi-function buttons that you'll see on the MG4. Now we do have a driver's display in front of us which moves with the steering column which is telescopically adjustable as well which is very useful but it is packed with information making it a bit hard at first to learn what everything's doing and it took me a little while to actually read where the speed was being recorded for your radar cruise control. I actually didn't know what speed it was until I looked up on the top right amongst all these different symbols and numbers and right there I could see my speed. So there's a lot of information packed in right there. Now down here we have a row of plastic buttons which are pretty easy to control and use. I do love the volume slider. I also love the design of the shifter although the quality of it is just a little bit questionable. It moves around quite a lot and doesn't feel as nice as the MG4 shifter. But everything else in the BYD does feel just a tiny bit nicer. But Let's talk about this screen. So this BYD screen is actually pretty incredible for the price point. Now check the responsiveness. This is wild. This is unmatched unless you're driving a Tesla. This thing is incredibly responsive, but what's cool, of course, is that you can rotate it. Now there is no functionality to this at all. Instead, this just looks cool, and if you prefer driving around as a vertical uh, screen, you can, because most of us use vertical screens every single day in the form of our phone, but at least you can use it like this. Now, going through the different functions here, we do have um, some pretty useful functions, including a BYD assistant, which you say, hey, BYD, turn down the volume. Media volume is currently set to the minimum. So you can go ahead and use this voice assistant for most things like navigation, controlling your cars, climate, and also volume. And you've also got Bluetooth connectivity with your phone, you've got radio, you've got music on board as well. So this is where you're gonna control your Bluetooth, SD card, USB music, and all that, which is pretty useful. You've also got navigation on board. You have Spotify inbuilt, which I've connected to, and it's very responsive as well. You can check that out here. It's just really responsive, which is great. Um, you can go ahead and connect to Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Play. You've got a media center as well. You've got your 360 degree parking camera, which yes, the uh, MG can come with that, but then you've also got this 3D view, which is very responsive and it also will correlate and move along with you while you're driving, which is pretty cool. Um, and for an affordable electric car, that's a great feature. Now you've also got these utility tools here, like you've got file managers, you can disable auto start. You've also got data monitors as well. You've got a album here, uh, so you can put some photos on there. You've got settings, smart charging, your digital radio, and you can even change your theme and also your background of your screen, which is crazy. You've also got the BYD store. So you can go here and use this as an app store, which is pretty interesting. So you can do stuff like karaoke and all that. And then as more uh, developers go ahead and make um, apps for the BYD, they will appear here, but it looks pretty limited for now. Now you've also got this button here, which will allow you to go to your most recent apps, just like a phone, which is awesome. You've also got your controls here for your media. You can also split the screen as well, which is insane, uh, very useful. And then down here you have your client 
climate controls and these are locked behind a screen, but I don't mind because this is very, very responsive and useful. So at least it's not some lame, uh, laggy mess. Instead, I can interact with this just fine. And to be honest, it's really, really intuitive. Now the settings here, you'll see stuff like your internet audio display. Um, you've also got other things as well, like your software updates and all that. Um, I do like having my theme on dark mode, so I'm gonna change it to that. That also does change your driver's display, which is way easier to read if you ask me. And you've also got your ADAS system. So these are your driver assist settings as well. And you've got your energy consumption and also you can change your driving mode as well. So you can have a more sporty steering wheel. Um, you've also got some details there about your consumption. You've got vehicle settings, so you can do a sport brake assist mode or you can do a, a uh, sporty steering assist mode. And you can also check your vehicle health here as well. So for an affordable electric car, this is insanely useful. But now using these dolphin style handles to get out, yes, they're meant to be modeled after dolphin flippers. Let's see how the back seat room is for both cars. Now getting into the back of the MG4 is pretty easy. I love how cushioned these rear seats are as well. They're very comfortable, although our feet room underneath the seat in front of me is a bit limited as a five foot 11 adult. I have okay amounts of headroom back here, but I have a nice plush headrest as well. And we have plenty of pockets to store things here on the back seats, but we still have lots of scratchy plastics back here. But we do have nice big windows as well. Oh, and there's no center armrest, which is a bit frustrating. And there's only one USB-A port back here where you'll find the BYD Dolphin to be a tiny bit more usable. But then here in the back of the BYD Dolphin, I have much more feet room. My knee room feels pretty good. I'm sitting a bit further back as well, so I feel a bit more reclined and I have more light coming in at the back. So I do find the rear seats to be a little bit more habitable. I feel a little bit more comfortable back here. I've also got an additional USB port in the form of a USB-C port. So we have two USB charging ports in the back and it depends which cable you want to use. You have some flexibility there. We have those dolphin style handles as well in terms of the dolphin fin design. We've also got some storage bins and yes, lots of cheaper plastic, but some soft some materials around the doors, around the handles where you're going to be touching, which is quite nice. These seats feel a little bit more firm than the MG4 seats, but they still feel pretty comfortable. But at least we have a center armrest here, which makes it a lot more comfortable for longer drives. But my headroom is a little bit limited as a five foot 11 adult. So if you're over six foot and you have a bit of a taller torso, you might be getting close to that roof there. But I'm just fitting in and I'm feeling very comfortable. So to be honest, the better back seat would be in the back of the BYD Dolphin. Now here's where things get interesting. You get nicer alloy wheels here on the BYD Dolphin, even as a base model, but you do get Ling Long tires with little dolphins etched into the sidewall to let you know this was a tire made for the BYD Dolphin. But see, Ling Long tires don't really grip up all that well when you're putting all this power down to the front wheels. Now, the issue is that this isn't that powerful, but when you put instant torque to the ground, the wheels will spin a bit freely. And if you have this thing in sport mode, this thing does like to chirp a lot if you have the wheels turned and you put a bit more than an adequate amount of power down, which is somewhat easy to do in an electric car that's very responsive. You do get larger wheels on the MG4, but they have these plastic covers on them and the wheels underneath look okay, but they're not as nice looking as the BYD Dolphin. But of course, this is is a rear wheel drive car as standard, which means it grips up just a little bit better because it doesn't have to turn the wheels and put power down like the BYD Dolphin does. And also the MG4 does come with a better selection of tires in terms of either coming with a Continental set or even a set of Bridgestones. And out of personal driving experience, I found these to grip up a lot better on the road compared to those Ling Long tires. Now, neither of these cars have a front trunk, so both of them draw equal there. If you want to look under here, you're going to be looking at some serviceables like windshield washers, cool, and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, under here, at least you can open it up, but you're not gonna be able to use it for storage. But here's where things get a bit interesting. The MG4 doesn't come with a conventional heat pump. Instead, it comes with a thing called a thermistor, which helps regulate the cabin temperature if you want some heating on the inside, and also allows you, according to MG software, to precondition the battery for charging, which means it should raise the temperatures of the battery to help you get the most optimal and quick charge at a fast charger. Now, underneath the BYD smaller hood, you don't have any storage area as well. Now, this does come with a traditional heat pump, which helps regulate battery temperatures at lower temperatures, meaning that you won't lose a whole bunch of range, and will also help with heat 
heating as well inside the cabin. And even though despite this being a front motor, front wheel drive electric car, there's still some space here that I reckon if BYD wanted to, you could use this as a storage area. But now it's time to drive these two electric cars. And this one here is meant to be the better driving car on paper. But let's find out by driving around town where most of you will be driving these electric cars and see what they're like to drive, to park and live with. Now let's start the BYD. So you put your foot on the brake foot and then you touch this button here and that is very alien to you if you've been driving around the MG4 because that means you have a start button where the MG4 doesn't have one. Now I much prefer a button. It lets the car know immediately that I want to go rather than the car guessing me sitting in it having to close the door, a whole sequence which is very painful and I haven't really grown to like it in the MG4. I thought I would but I haven't really liked it. Now you have a shifter dial here which you pull down on to go into drive, you pull up to go into reverse and sort of do a half toggle to go into neutral. Now do I like it? Yeah it's good except the quality of it is just a bit shocking. It moves around quite a lot. It's made a very cheap plastic plastic and you press on the end to go into park. So it's very easy to use and very easy to get used to, but I would have liked this to be a nice material, especially since we're interacting with it every single time we drive this car. Now, as we get going, we've got our speed in front of us and it's pretty simple to operate. Now, it's interesting, if you get the premium, you actually get a multi-link rear suspension setup rather than the torsion beam on the cheaper Dolphin. Uh, that just means it's gonna feel a little bit more smooth, a little bit more, just less jumpy in corners. As we're cruising through here, you can hear the weight of this car over these sharp speed bumps, but I think it's very comfortable. It's right on smaller wheels, but wow, it does a really good job of just smoothing out those bumps. Now, this is my steering setup and my seating position is pretty good. I'm pretty comfortable, but I do feel it's like a little bit to the right. I feel like the seat is just a little bit to the left of the center of the steering wheel, which is just something I noticed initially, but I got used to driving this thing pretty quick. Now I put regen in the highest mode and we're just driving in normal mode. We have eco, normal and sport, and we've also got snow mode. Now it's indicating here, I've got 461 kilometers of range on 95% charge. So it's gonna be decent for going on longer trips outside of the CBD. But for daily driving, you probably have to charge this thing once or maybe twice a week. Now being a front wheel drive electric car, you do not notice it as being anything different compared to the MG4. You're driving around at low speeds at normal suburban speeds, and you're not gonna notice the fact that this is front wheel drive versus the MG being rear wheel drive. You're only gonna notice that when you start to put power down and want a corner. Now, as we're driving through here, I find it really easy to sort of just keep an eye on the speed. This thing's really good at pulling back on the speed as well. And then it's nice and responsive when you wanna sort of stab the throttle a tiny bit. So that's great. Everything's, all the controls are really easy to understand. I found it very easy to get into radar cruise control. It's also got decent lane keep assist as well. And all the controls here are very simple to use, like your volume controls and this screen is so responsive so I'm never fighting for it to go and get any vital controls out of it. And I actually haven't hooked this car up to Apple CarPlay because I found the natural navigation in this car to be very impressive. It's very responsive and it's very much like Tesla systems. It's almost like they reverse engineered a Tesla screen here. It's really quite impressive. And I just set up my Spotify, so I've got everything I really need for when I'm driving. Now the ride here is super smooth. I can feel some bumps translate through the cabin, obviously, but it's nothing abrupt. It's nothing too crazy. This thing is just really easy to cruise along, very calm, nice and well insulated from the outside world. It's, it is a premium driving experience. Now, I've got a nice amount of light entering from the top here. Now, the annoying thing with this car is it has very sensitive speed sign recognition, meaning that it's gonna read the speed signs in your local road and tell you that you should not be speeding when you're driving along, which is, Okay, sure, you can argue that's fine. It's not too intrusive, it just bings and bongs at you. If it says you're speeding, it'll tell you you're speeding. But what is annoying is that if it misreads the sign, which it can do and it has done in the short time I've spent with this thing. And that means that if you see a 40 km an hour sign on the back of a bus, you go around it, you're in a 60 zone, but you don't see another speed sign, yep, guess what? It's gonna tell you you're speeding and there's no way to adjust that or turn it off other than actually going to the settings here and having to turn that off yourself. Now, as we get up the speed here, it's actually a decent amount of power in this premium model. Now, the Null Dolphin suffers quite a lot in the power department. It takes over 12 seconds to accelerate from zero to 100 in that car. And that is a major downside when you get, the MG4 will only take a little over seven seconds to hit 100 kilometers an hour. So that will feel a lot quicker than the BYD Dolphin in its base model. But here, this premium model gets a bit more power, which means you can accelerate to 100 kilometers an hour in around seven seconds, which is absolutely all you need for daily driving. Now, when it comes to cornering in this thing, it does a really good job. I'm sort of just hooking up a little bit, but I do hear those Ling Long tires struggle for grip every so often. And it's a bit embarrassing, especially if you're trying to turn a corner like this and you want to do a sort of 
three-point turn. It's pretty easy to do in this car. It's got a really impressive turning circle. But if you want to take off like this from a standstill and you accidentally give it too much gas while you've got the wheel turned a tiny bit, oh, it's going to just struggle for grip just a little bit. And if you have it in sport mode even, it will like to chirp those tires, as I'll show you here. So we've got it in eco mode. We're going to go into sport, which is going to give us all our power. And we're going to go and just lightly drive along here and oop, we might want to just accelerate a bit more. <laughs> it's going to make an absolute scene. People are going to turn it going, who is that hoon driving around? That is kind of embarrassing to have that happen, even if you just want to put a bit more power down. If you have to get out of harm's way, we need to accelerate around someone and you have the wheels just slightly turned in sport mode, they will squeal and it's just, yeah, a little bit much. As you start to drive a bit more in the MG4, you realize, yes, this is the better handling car when it comes to actual driving dynamics. The BYD Dolphin is a fine commuter car. It's quite good, actually. It's really com comfortable, but when it comes to putting down power, the MG4 does it better. It doesn't squeal around, it doesn't do anything like that. And then you can even get it in this long range version with an all wheel drive setup, which is pretty cool. But yes, you will pay for that. And it's not slow either. Seven seconds to 100 as a base acceleration figure is very impressive for an affordable electric car when compared to the competition. And then you can get something as fast as this, which is around five seconds per 100, or you can go and get the X Power, which is 3.8 seconds to 100. So you have a nice range of options there as well. That's what the MG4 does a little bit better is that it offers a more diverse range of options if you want different selections of drivetrain and battery size. But here, yeah, it's quite nice. The insulation from the outside well, it's just a little bit better in here. It sounds a little bit quieter as well. And the thing that really just sort of sets this apart is the chassis and drive tra drivetrain setup. It just feels a little bit quicker to respond. It feels a little sharper, and it also just feels a little bit more fun to engage with as well. When you poke it, it does feel a little bit more alive than the BYD Dolphin. But here's the thing, if you're buying an affordable electric car, you're probably not buying it because it's going to be the most exciting, the most involved. <laughs> but that's what this feels like when you're comparing the two. It just feels a little bit more alive when comparing them. Now, here's the things that annoy me about the MG4 after experiencing the BYD Dolphin. These multi-function toggles, they're not named, they have different functions depending on what sub-menus you press, and they're just a bit confusing. Even though I've been in and out of a few of these cars, I, don't, I couldn't confidently tell you how to use them. Instead, I just sort of do some guessing when I'm using them on the road. And finally, the screen here. It's fine. You're going to want to use Apple CarPlay because the native system here is okay, but when compared to the BYD Dolphin, it is not comparable. It is definitely behind in that regard. The voice assistant isn't as responsive. It's a little bit limited in its capabilities and it sure doesn't have an app store. Now the seating position here is really a bit more relaxed. It's a bit further down. I feel like you've got a better view out through this giant window here. You don't have that thick A pillar design and that means you don't need that separate window instead of you just got a larger side window here. And look, it's a very functional day-to-day -day driving electric car. And that's what makes the MG4 so good in that regard. Guard, is that you just hop in, get going, and it's just pretty easy to operate and there's nothing overly complicated to learn that might turn you off when you're driving something like the BYD Dolphin. There's a lot to learn then. For someone of my generation, that's fine. That is something that's approachable. I like to use it and I find it functional. But here, this is going to be more appealing to people who don't really want to mess around with that. And also, if they find the idea of an overcomplicated screen a little bit daunting, here at least there's more simple screen, feels just easy to engage with and to be honest, a little less distracting. Now, there's no annoying safety systems in here that's gonna bing and bong at me if it reads a speed sign wrong, which is great. I love that. That means we've got a pretty uninterrupted driving experience. I will say that the suspension setup in this thing is a bit interesting. So I do find it sort of duck dives a little bit on some smooth bits of road because it's got this longer wheelbase and it just sort of does this a little bit more, so it bounces up and down, which is fine. It's not really that noticeable and the ride is pretty good. But for some reason, I do find the Dolphin to be a little bit softer around Town. And it could be because this is riding on slightly larger wheels. And I do find the steering wheel to be very comfortable to engage with every single day. But here's my take. If you want the more practical option, buy the MG4. If you like some nicer features, creature comforts, all that sort of stuff, buy the BYD Dolphin. It's just a bit more comfortable and I do like the technology that comes with it. But at the end of the day, if you pick the MG over the BYD Dolphin, you're not going to miss out too much. But my personal preference is that I would buy the BYD Dolphin over the MG4 if it was my money. Oh, and let me know down below, what would you pick, the MG4 or the BYD Dolphin?